Hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of the PSD to CSS Online video tutorial series. My name is Sean and uh, today we're going to look at a way to use the frame feature from PSD to CSS Online. That's a, that's a feature that uh, we've had for a little while now. You can draw for a, for a given piece of content, text content, or uh, on your on your page and your design, you can draw a frame around it. And if the content is dynamic, or you change the words in it, you change something about your content, the frame will will grow or expand or contract uh, fluidly with your content. Um, and a lot of people like that. They've been using it. And of course, the first thing somebody wanted to do was put multiple frames on their page and put uh, different chunks of content so that when one frame would expand, the frames below it would push down. And um, that wasn't really supported until today. So this is how you do it. So let's look at a, uh, a pretty straightforward uh, design here for a website, web page. Um, as for anything in PSD to CSS Online, this is Photoshop. You just draw what you want your website or your web page to look like. Um, you name some of the layers right and uh, PSD to CSS Online will convert it in seconds to, uh, to a working web page. Um, so we'll look at uh, the feature that we're interested in here today. So right here, one of these boxes, this is what we're calling a frame today. This is what I drew. It's kind of simple and straightforward. It's just outlined. Um, has kind of a darker line at the top. There's a drop shadow. Um, but that's, that's a frame, and it's called C1 underscore frame. And uh, I'll talk about relative here in a second. And then the text that goes inside it, in this case, is this gray box right here. Instead of a gray box in the final website, that'll be a text area with uh, some CSS hints and some comments about what to do there. Um, it'll also have this color, but uh, underscore text is how you uh, define text. Underscore frame is how you define the frame. And the new part of this whole feature is the underscore relative. If you have a number of frames, as I do here, you can see I have three of them, C2, 3, and C3. Um, if you name them relative and put them all inside some kind of big container, can see this big black empty one underscore empty makes it uh, empty it won't be black in the final web page but uh, there will be a div there so uh, if you make these frames relative and you put them all inside a, uh, a container they will work they'll do what you expect when this one gets longer these will push down when this one gets longer that one will push down and uh, if any of them are shorter then you know it, it does what you expect so we will uh, and I got some space for some other text here and a, a centered background and stuff like that. So uh, let's uh, save this file, save, and we will upload it to PSD to CSS Online. Three frames that PSD upload. So there we go. It's crunching away. What uh, PSD to CSS Online is doing is taking apart that Photoshop file, taking apart those layers, examining the layer names, taking the art out of each layer um, for the non-text layers. It's going to use the, that art, make some PNG files or JPEG files and and uh, and write all the HTML and write all the CSS. It's going to write JavaScript. It's going to write a whole bunch of code for us and it's probably just about done. Still thinking here. Not a very fit, big file. It should be kind of quick unless... Oh, there we go. Um, so uh, we can look at it. Here's the, here's the page as it was generated. We can switch back over to the Photoshop. You can see it looks exactly the same. It's pixel for pixel the same. Uh, the text that got put into this area here is a little bigger than this this square. So you can see it got a little longer, which is exactly what a frame does. It, it extended this uh, border. And uh, and here's the, the second and third frames. And, and of course, the top frame did not overwrite the second frame. That was the big problem that we had, is uh, if you don't put relative in that name for frame, uh, each of these frames will start, the upper left hand corner will always be where you drew it. And uh, if there's a frame above it and it gets longer, it's just going to write over the second frame. That was the big problem. So the solution is using underscore relative. Uh, make sure you put them inside some kind of container too. Uh, and then they just work. Now, it's not, uh, it's not super obvious that it works here. So I already, uh, I already made a version, another version of this. Uh, and put some text in it. It's it uh, lives in our the tutorials folder here. You can go and visit it, and you can use it to download the PSD file that uh, you just saw that we made this example with. But uh, but the interesting part about this version is I made a I added a little JavaScript to dynamically change the content in these three frames, and uh, you can see the frame feature doing what it's supposed to do and not overwriting the 
the other frames below it. So every time you click this, you see how the uh, the content all changes, and and sure enough, they they match exactly the way they're supposed to. Every time the content changes, no matter what the content is, the frames do exactly what they're supposed to, and don't write over one another, and don't leave big gaps. So there you go. That's it. We we drew our frames. We drew some text inside. We converted it to PS at PSD to CSS online to code, and uh, here we can take a look at the code. How much time do we got? Five minutes. We get a little bit of time. Uh, view the page source. Here's the code that uh, PSD to CSS online generates. You can see there's lots of comments to uh, to help you understand what's going on. Um, here's the CSS that was generated. Again, lots of comments to show what's going on. If if you have a text area here, here was my you named this layer main text. That was my main text area. It gave me some some suggestions for the text settings. I can overflow out of. There's all sorts of stuff in there. So, uh, you know, one other thing, as long as we're here and I've got a moment, uh, I can show you the, uh, we use a new version of center. Uh, this right here, underscore center two, instead of underscore center. It uses a different uh, technique, CSS technique, to center the page. In the past, a centered page, when you would uh, expand and contract it like that, it would, if you got it real narrow, you would only see the middle of your page. It really centered all the, all the content, regardless of the width. Center two leaves all your content on the left visible if the if the uh, browser gets narrower. Um, so I really need to make another video for that. I don't even think that's uh, documented yet. I should probably do that tonight too. So anyway, that's uh, that's it. The uh, the underscore frame feature now works with relative, and uh, you can put a whole bunch of frames, one on top of each other, and it just works like you'd expect, and you don't have to write any code. Thanks.